Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now when AMD released their Ryzen APUs, it got me and a lot of people very excited. After all, they came out during a time when the mining crisis had PC part prices going sky high. Their strong integrated graphics or stronger integrated graphics meant they were a great choice for people who didn't want to spend too much money on a system, but also wanted to be able to get away with playing a few games here and there as well at both 720p and full HD resolutions. Now we've also started to uh, slowly see the introduction of Ryzen APU based laptops, like this one I have here. This is the Acer Aspire 3 and it's one of, if not the cheapest Ryzen APU based laptop that I could find in both the UK and the US. Now this particular laptop features a Ryzen 3 2200U, is available in the UK for £329 and can be found in the US with slightly different specs for $280, but we'll get onto that a little bit later on. Today I want to review this laptop, see what it's like when it comes to overall general performance as well as games, and compare the processor inside this thing to its desktop counterpart, the Ryzen 3 2200G. So, without further ado, let's get into it and see what this thing is capable of and talk about whether or not you should buy it if you're looking for a portable and perhaps light gaming solution at the same time. So, at first glance, this machine certainly doesn't look like anything special, that's for sure. It's an all-black plastic design that really doesn't set it apart from other laptops within a similar price range, but that's okay as it feels pretty solid and sturdy but not too heavy. But let's address an important issue before proceeding, and that's the slight differences you may come across between different retailers. Here in the UK, AO.com offer this at the lowest price I've found. It features a full HD screen but only 4GB of DDR4 memory. The cheapest I could find this in the US was at Staples. It's otherwise identical but has 8GB of RAM and a 1366x768 display. Personally, if gaming is in your main interest, then the 8GB model with the lower res screen would be better for you, as you'll see later on. That being said, the 4GB laptop can always be upgraded to 8 or even 16GB of RAM further down the line, so bear both of those factors in mind. I believe you can get a full HD 8GB model as well, if you pay a little bit more, so look carefully at the specs if you consider buying one. Before we get to performance though, let's look a little more at aesthetics. For everyday usage, the keyboard is spacious and comfortable, and is a pleasure to type on. I can excuse the fact that it's not backlit considering the price, but my main gripe is the fact that there is no light on the key or indication around the bezel when caps lock is activated. A small complaint? but this is something that can be surprisingly annoying over time. I also dislike the way the power button is disguised as a keyboard key. Around the sides you get the usual selection of essential ports including HDMI, USB 3 and an SD card reader. We've also got a lovely large trackpad here which is let down a little by the slight sponginess it possesses. I've probably made it sound a little meh, by now, so I know you're itching to see if the performance makes up for it, but I can't resist showing you a few shots from the front facing 0.3 megapixel snapper. You won't be winning a spot on the country file calendar with this, put it that way. So performance time. The Ryzen 3 2200U inside this thing is a mobile version of the popular and recent 2200G. It's clocked at 2.5GHz and unlike its fully fledged desktop counterpart, it only has two cores and four threads. It does have Vega graphics, but these are Vega 3, not 8. It's also very low power with just a 15 watt TDP. Everyday usage then feels very snappy indeed. Browsing the web is a breeze and I really couldn't fault the experience over the three hours that I used it. After doing so, it had about 30% battery left, so you can expect it to last between 3 and 5 hours depending on usage. Gaming will drag that time down of course. It also handled a little bit of video editing fairly well, so I fired up Cinebench R15 to see what sort of results we could expect. As you can see from the multi-core test, it scored 339 points. To put that into some perspective, I decided to compare it to the desktop 2200G, which for fairness I also used with just 4GB of 2400MHz RAM too. 
It got beaten for sure in the multi-core test, but the single-core performance was very similar. But what about gaming? Well, let's take a look at some footage. In Fortnite, the experience was a rather stuttery one, even though the average FPS stayed above 30. This was likely due to the 4 gigs of RAM, which will still be fine for some games but not others. To confirm or dismiss this theory, I later added a second 4 gigabyte stick of DDR4 and reran the tests, which I've included on screen also, as well as the desktop 2200G results with both 4 and 8 gigabytes of 2400MHz memory. Doing so eliminated some stutter but didn't improve the overall average and as you can see here, all the results are included on screen. Fortnite also gave me a chance to check out the speakers which, in all fairness, do sound quite good even at just 50%. In Overwatch it was a similar story though as we progressed through the first half hour of gameplay things seemed to smooth out a little. Considering that this machine is likely intended for home and office usage, given the price it's nice to know that you can just jump into a game if you get bored and if it's not a recent AAA release then chances are it will be playable at 30 plus FPS. The real star of the show is definitely the processor though. I never expected it to outpace the desktop Ryzen APU, but I've included the comparisons throughout because I feel it would be a commonly asked question otherwise. And of course 8GB of RAM in this laptop would help smooth out some of those 1% and 0.1% lows, in turn reducing some of the stutter that you may see during gameplay. Moving on to Dirt 4, and I have to say that judging by the graphics performance of the Vega 3 in this laptop, I'd have to say that they're on par performance-wise with perhaps an Intel HD 620i GPU found in some entry-level notebooks as well. So while they are capable of playing some newer titles, those big AAA releases will struggle on this system. 8 gigs of RAM will make some difference to the stability of the games, and the GPU is definitely the weak link here. That's why this system definitely shines when it comes to running lighter games like Minecraft, which, even at the maximum settings, will do just fine and average close to 100 FPS most of the time. A couple more words on the processor, and you can expect this thing to outpace some of the older Gen i5s, um, as you may have seen in the older Cinebench test. The processor really does save this laptop. I really feel that this is a great purchase because of the 2200U inside this thing. The fact that the system overall stayed very quiet as well, even when running these games, was quite a bonus too. Now the way you can tell the GPU is the limiting factor is that it will probably be running at 99% usage a lot of the time, as you can see by those MSI afterburner statistics in the top left corner. While this thing does excel at running lighter titles like Minecraft, that isn't to say it can't run older AAA releases. Games like 2013's Tomb Raider will average 60 frames per second, albeit on the low settings, but it's definitely more than playable on this device. I briefly touched on video editing earlier as well, and the fact that this can handle that means that video editing on the go is definitely more than doable with this machine, which is always a bonus, especially if, like me, you do a lot of content creation or want to try out for the very first time but really don't have that much money to spend. Though that's where the extra RAM will definitely come in handy. Overall, I know I sound like a broken record, but the CPU is really what makes this thing a great everyday performer. The Vega 3 graphics on the other hand are a bit of a letdown in my opinion. Furthermore, I'd strongly advise getting the 8GB version with the lower res screen, or the 4GB version with the 1080p screen if you have the intention to upgrade the RAM, and are confident in doing so. Though, as I said before, I believe you can find a 1080p 8GB model in certain markets. Although the onboard GPU is what seems to be the main limiting factor in games, the single channel memory in this case doesn't help the situation either, though basic tasks aren't really hindered by this. 
Because of the success and decent price to performance of the desktop 2200G, it could be easy to assume that the mobile chip would be almost as good, if you don't read into the specs first. I think overall this machine is priced fairly, it will certainly surprise you if you were to fire up Premiere Pro or Photoshop with initially low expectations, but it may leave you a little disappointed in the gaming department, which in all fairness, it isn't really marketed as a gaming machine anyway though the name of the APU may of course make you think otherwise at first glance. So there we have it, I hope you've enjoyed the review of the Acer Aspire 3. If you did, leave a like on the video down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.